Welcome, everybody, to week three of uh, Virtual Reality Month at Reserve Seating. So this is sort of the centerpiece film, if you will. It's like when the Chicago International Film Festival has their, you know, centerpiece screening in the middle of the two weeks. That's what this is, is Brett Leonard's visionary, revolutionary, 1992 New Line Cinema cult classic, The Lawnmower Man. And before we get into the review, I, I want to tell you guys about a, a bonus feature on the, the Scream Factory disc. Um, it was for the Lawnmower Man sweepstakes. Okay. And I, want to hear, I want you to hear these prizes. That you, It was a 1-900 number thing. You call, you answer two multiple choice questions. They were very easy. Like one was, who are the two stars of the movie? And the other one was, what is virtual reality? And like one of the options was like, uh, uh, virtual reality is like the brand of a lawnmower. And it's like, no, come on guys. No. <laughs> like, even, so it was very easy, but you could win um, lawnmower man shirts. You could wear, or you could win um, the body suits from the movie worn <laughs> by one of the stars is what they said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would want it if it was like Pierce's laundered, but if it was just like sweaty, dirty, I'd go Fahey. <laughs> <laughs> did you look these up on eBay, Adam? I have not yet. I did a I did a cursory look of uh, Lawnmower Man stuff on eBay. The best thing I found was like the crew jacket mm. from the movie, and that was like one hundred and fifty dollars or something. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, you could win a, a walk on role in Lawnmower Man 2. So, oh. somebody won that, and we got to find him. Got to figure out who it was next yeah. week. Um, and then you could get the grand prize was your choice of one of three things a $40,000 valued virtual reality kit with hardware and software, and you get like the giant headset from like 1992. With, that's like got the yellow thing it looks like an oculus mixed with like um like anakin skywalker's helmet from the phantom <laughs> menace um and then if you didn't want that you could get a mazda i don't know what model mazda but just a mazda mazda or twenty thousand dollars seems like a pretty pretty much a no-brainer to me yeah <laughs> yeah mike are you taking the mazda you look like a mazda guy what is I, I, I was gonna ask what a Mazda guy looks like, but I think you answered that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Mike, well, it, it, it's not it's not February without you on reserve seating. So we're very excited to have you here. Sure. February is Mike. Yeah, Highlander Legacy member. So, Mike, did you see High, uh, Lawnmower Man in the theaters? No, I did not. I saw it when it hit video for the first time. And I really think that was the last time I saw it before yesterday. When okay. I watched it. So I have in, in my memory of seeing it in uh, when it hit video was that I I I liked it enough. Mm -hmm. Um but I but obviously not enough to like I d I don't know why, honestly, I haven't gone back to it, but I had not gone back to it. So that's why I was pretty excited to to jump on this one. Rob, what about you? Um, was this a movie you had much history with? I had not seen it before. I had I had been aware of it. I had known that it was an early Brosnan. I, I knew I, I have to have seen the trailer. I'd seen all the you know. I'd obviously seen the the most iconic of the virtual reality images, but I never actually had seen the pro. It's it's one of those movies I sort of absorbed by pop culture osmosis. I I didn't really ever sit down and actually watch it. What about you? Cool. Uh, yeah, so I was, it was one of those movies, it came out when I was nine, almost 10, and I was fascinated by the visual effects, because um, to a grade schooler, it looks like the coolest thing you've ever seen. Sure. Um, so I was, I was all in, um, but at that point in time, I was very rarely going to see R-rated movies and theaters with my parents and everything. So I, like Mike, saw this on home video. Um, 
And I remember it not being at the time, like quite what I wanted it to be. Um, Cause I didn't think like it really worked as, and this, we, we should get into this a little bit. Um, so this is very loosely based on almost like an idea right. from a Stephen King short story. Um, he sued to have his name taken off of this because the, the filmmakers have made up most of the movie whole, out of whole cloth and just used like one sequence, I think, where like the Austin O'Brien's father gets attacked by the lawnmower. I think that was kind of from <laughs> the Stephen King source material, but that was it. Um, but at the time, I was just like, this doesn't really it, it's not one of my favorite Stephen King movie adaptations. Um, I thought that the whole movie was basically going to be like Job and Cyberspace, like punching buttons like access denied access denied access denied which i thought was like the coolest thing in the, the good world. stuff yeah yeah the good <laughs> stuff yeah um but over time it's a it's one of those movies where like i it's like i don't know if i like it but like i keep going back to it and then um i think in the past two times i've watched it once was when the scream factory disc just came out which was like five years ago and then when i watched it this weekend i'm just like 10 out of 10 no notes <laughs> like on this movie i just it hits all of my mall movie buttons when i want again when i watched it yesterday when it ended um i thought it was fine it left me a little underwhelmed but i will be honest if you said let's stop recording right now to watch it again i absolutely would uh i started to watch the director's cut a little bit and then i gave up on it about a half hour in um, the director's cut is vastly different okay. from the theatrical, especially in the opening act. They really draw out um, the experiment with the chimpanzee. Um, it escapes in the di director's cut. It escapes from the lab. It ends up in like Job's shed. And there's oh. like a, a manhunt for it. It takes like 30 minutes for like what is handled in about two minutes in the huh. theatrical cut. And um, from everything I I heard and like the the making of and stuff like I the Brett Leonard and the filmmakers were like really convinced that this longer cut like fleshed out the characters and made it a better movie it didn't seem like just kind of like this rush genre exercise but I think it works best as a rush genre exercise like I much prefer the theatrical cut I uh think that this movie like the pulpier the better um I think it has just enough character development for like the two leads really um where the movie succeeds well enough but like this is a new line cinema movie and like the director's cut they made i heard somebody in a retrospective review aptly described as like this feels like a, a stephen king tv miniseries um with the time they're taking whereas you in order to get this out to teenagers in the theaters like i think they chose the right version they 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 cut it down to brass tacks like get down to the money shots the vr stuff everything yeah. like that. and this is so much like when you look at this versus virtuosity which we just talked about yeah you can see this you can see the clear difference in intent and execution here this one is far better execution of you know, pretty hokey premise. I mean, it's, it's, it should be hokey, you know, when you have, when you get into virtuosity, you start to get into the, into the Denzel of it all, which as we said, sort of felt like it kind of complicated the tone a little bit. He's, mm -hmm. he's giving a Denzel performance, whereas Russell Crowe is bouncing off the walls and there's all kinds of other stuff going on where this one like is tonally much more consistent. It's much more just straightforward about what it's doing. It's this goofy sci-fi premise. It's, it's, it's owning that it's doing everything it, it you know, it wants to do. Um, it doesn't have any, you know, its eyes are not bigger than its stomach, basically. I, I really love how dated the visual effects are in this movie. Like, it's it's more dated than anything in Tron, which came out, you know, 10 years prior. I mean, like, but when you see giant Jeff Fahey head in the front lawn and he turns the the government agents into dipping dots. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. When you look at like this and Jurassic Park are like eight months apart, you know what I mean? Like that's- Totally, totally. Oh, wild. Yeah. Uh, Mike, were you ever like a virtual reality guy either in the nineties or like as the technologies developed? No, I wasn't. I, I was a video game guy, but I never got into virtual reality. Yeah. I, it was interesting, like, going back and watching some of the behind-the-scenes featurettes and stuff like that, because some of it that they touched on was, you know, like, 
their their reach exceed their exceeded their grasp. Did I say that right? You got it. It was the other way around. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, where everybody kind of going into it at the beginning of VR was like, think about the potential, but it's just like the de the the developments of the technology just like could not keep up with where they wanted it to go but so one thing i just love about this month and just revisiting these virtual reality movies and thinking back on things like disclosure is like things that are just i i guess well i'll give credit for lawnmower man with is like at least what they're doing is complicated in the <laughs> vr whereas in disclosure it's just like where did i save the word file and you have to go on <laughs> like a side like a side quest to find it and it's just like this is not practical at all i i do like that you know brosnan is just so like depressed and hairy and smoky <laughs> and drinky in this that like in the scene where he's in bed i'm like just have cigarettes and a cigar <laughs> and scotch like well, I like to imagine that this is what Pierce Brosnan was actually doing in this period of the late '90s, early t or, uh, or uh, late '80s, early '90s, because you know he famously talks about you know screen testing for James Bond before Timothy Dalton, right? Yeah. And Gentleman T. Dalton, he had supposedly you know was gotten the role, ready to go, and then Remington Steele comes back, so he's in this sort of fallow period after Remington Steele, where he doesn't get James Bond, and like it's, I don't know the timeline. I don't think he would have gotten because Golden Eyes out till '95, right? So I don't right. know that he would have known that he. Was was going to be bond yet or had even done another audition for it so i just like to i always like to wonder as i was watching this movie i was like wondering like i wonder if this is what brosnan thought he was going to be doing for the rest of his career you know what i mean like he's he's so close to the the, the, the biggest you know part of his part of his uh his resume you know you know but the more depressed he got in this movie and like the the longer the beard and more disheveled he got the handsomer he got oh my god he is I, the yeah best looking <laughs> i i can't believe how handsome he is it's so i know yeah, I, I really recommend the behind the scenes feature ad on the Screen Factory disc because like they do say something like like Brett Leonard saw him and he's just like he's too beautiful. Like we need to find a way to so he's like, I was trying to like underlight him and I I like would get him his hair wet so he looks sweaty and stuff like that. Yeah, I did that's this right. and I did that and he's like he and he just looked better. He's yeah. like I quit he's like eventually I just gave up. <laughs> Brett Leonard, uh who's uh, he seems like a like a super chill nice guy as evidence of like the behind the scenes stuff but and he also looks like if you took like steven seagal and mixed him with oliver stone but like made him a good terminator it's like the weird <laughs> i was thing. about to say i was like that does not sound like a chill normal guy <laughs> no but he's that's what's so disarming about it he seems All like right. yeah he's he's like the sensei that you want in your life um, but uh yeah i mean i don't know like i i i, I always Jeff Day, he's not an actor I always am like thinking about necessarily, but like whenever I see him as the lead in a movie, like it's always kind of delivers on the genre goods. He's so, always working. I looked at his IMDb know. before we started and good Lord, does that man work. So um, I'm on the edge of my seat for next week because this might be a Highlander, the final dimension situation because the, the two times that I watched Lawnmower Man 2, I thought that it was like an outlaw classic <laughs> where I'm de I've described it as the Gremlins 2 of the Lawnmower Man series. So I'm really nervous about next week, but I hope you guys like it. No, I'm one, I'm really looking forward to Lawnmower Man 2. I've not seen it, um, but I'm very excited for it. Two, Rob, do you know who Mod Son is? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, I'll text you a photo soon, but I, it'll make more sense. But if I were to remake... Lawnmower Man, Adam. I know you know who Mod Son is. Mod Son would be a good Lawnmower Man, and then you might get Avril on the soundtrack because he's engaged to her. So forget that. I want Avril That's... in the Jenny Wright part. Well, I'm, they can work together. So next week we'll be back with uh, Lawnmower Man two. Leave a comment in uh, uh, on YouTube on what you would have picked for the grand prize. Would it have been the Mazda? Would it have been the twenty grand? <laughs> Or would it have been the oversized VR headset that looks like you would need a chiropractor after wearing it like twice because your neck would be fucked. <laughs> so until next time. These virtual seats are reserved. Get out of my mind, Rob. For you. I'm in the thing. I'm in the gyroscope. Yeah.